Praise the Lord. This is Sister Marilyn Belcher, and I am the pastor of the First United Pentecostal Church. And I'm glad that you are with us today. I'm thankful that God is in control. Uh, the last few days, our weather has been just off the chart. And yours may have been too. And so we were in the high 70s yesterday and told that we were going to get some severe weather, but God. And thank God we didn't because we've had severe weather just about every day since the beginning of this year. And we're only into mid-February. And so the storms did come through, but they were not of the severe limit that was expected. And then today we are in the uh, 40s, and by morning we'll be uh, in the 20s. And then the temp starts going back up so that by mid-next week we're going to be in the 80s. And so all I know is God is in control, not just of the weather, but God's in control of all things. So you don't let circumstances pull you down. You don't let people pull you down. You look to God and you know that He is the author and the finisher of our faith. So today, as I strive to do every week, I want to encourage you. You know, we're so close to the coming of the Lord and, and we find ourselves overwhelmed and it seems like people is just a biting against each other. Families biting against each other. Co-workers are biting against each other. And sad to say, many times, in the church the saints are biting against each other but I want to encourage you I want to to lift you up today because we need each other we need words of encouragement and I just pray today that's what I'm able to do. I want to give my weekly shout out to Brittany. Hey Britt Britt Sister Marilyn enjoyed being with you uh, a few days ago, and if the Lord permits, I'll be back, and, and we'll be able to, to be with you again. I do thank God for all things, and I am so glad that I am serving Him and worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Today, I'm going to be uh, preaching the next few minutes on let thine enemies be scattered and my opening text is coming from psalm 68 and verse 1 and you'll find very similar reading back in numbers the 10th chapter and verse 35 but i'm going to be coming from psalms 68 and one and the words read let god arise let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. You know, over in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter and verse 31, the latter part of the verse says, If God be for us, who can be against us? So again today, I want you to look up. God is in control. And the Bible says there in Psalms again, it says, Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Now, if God be for us, and the question is, who can be against us? Then our enemies are his enemies. And it says, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him with God on my side that's all that matters this one can say yeah 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 and that one can say yeah 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 and when I I, I I take the time to regroup when I take the time to get focused again I realize it doesn't matter who says what as long as God is on my side and today I plan to keep him on my side 
In Psalms 89 and 10, the scripture reads there, Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. Thou hast scattered them. Where are they at? Well, I saw one going over the hillside over there. Saw one going under the bridge over there. Man, they was just running like the old saying, as scalded dogs. The Bible says there, Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The Bible teaches us to resist the devil and he will flee from us how could that be because God arose and let his enemies be scattered let them also that hate him flee before him we've got the Lord on our side and that's enough let me tell you my friend Get God on your side. If you feel like all you do is fight, fight, fight. As some would say, you're just beating the wind and you're fighting. Let God fight your battles. Let God be victorious. Let us just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Let us just see God at work. Over in Psalms, also the 34th chapter and verse 7. The Bible says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The angel of the Lord. You know if the devil's got going to try and get to me, he's got to cross the bloodline first. He can't do anything unless God gives him permission. And any power and all power that old Slewfoot has is what God has given him. He couldn't even go against Job unless he had God's permission. Not one time, but two times. He had to go before God and get permission from God and then God gave him limitations about what he could and could not do. So if that applied to Job, my child, today it still applies to us. Let thine enemies arise and be scattered. In Exodus, the 23rd chapter and verse 23, the scripture says, I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs upon thee. Now, I, I was raised in the country. And I'm still country. I'm country with a K and love every bit of it. But the only ones that I know that would turn their back to you in battle are the chickens. Those that are afraid. Those that fear. Those that are yellow bat and coward. But yet, the scripture said, I will send my fear, the fear of God. I will send my fear before thee. And will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto you, unto thee. In other words, they're just yellow back chickens. They turn their back. They're going to run, like I said a minute ago, like scalded dogs. You let God take care of your battles. You let God fight your battles. It kind of be like the woman and, and that, that they said they caught in adultery. And they brought her before Jesus. And they had stones in their hand. 
But by the time the Lord got through talking to every one of them, the stones were falling to the ground. And before it was all said and done, nobody was standing there but the woman and the Jesus. And he looked at her and he said, where are your accusers? And she looked around and they were nowhere to be found. My friend, God will do the same for you and I because he loves us. Yeah, the, the enemies, whoever it may be, they've got stones ready to throw our way. But by the time the Lord gets through with them, the stones are at our feet. <laughs> the stones are laying at our feet. And those old accusers, those old enemies, they're gone. Because they could not stand against the power of God. And you and I belong to God. And Romans said, if God be for us, who can be against us? And the last scripture I've got is in 2 Chronicles. This 32nd chapter and verses 7 and eight. This is King Hezekiah, the king of Judah, and he's talking to his people. He said, Be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than. With him. Now there was a lot of people. But the Bible says that the angel of the Lord. Encampeth. Around about them. That fear him. And deliver them. So I just feel like. There was a lot of angels. Encamped. Around about Hezekiah. And his people of Judah. And he went on in the verse 8. He said. With him, talking about old king of Syria, he said, with him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Let's find rest today in the words and in the promises of God. If God be for us, who can be against us? Heavenly Father, we come before you this day thanking you so much, knowing that you're fighting our battles, knowing that the old devil and all the enemies God, that they have to flee when we call upon the name that is above every name. When we call upon the name of Jesus, they have to flee. And I thank you for that today. And I ask that you help the dear people to call upon you and to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.